G'day mate, 40 here. So about three weeks ago, I was diagnosed with uh, ADHD and it's been something that's kind of been on the periphery of my consciousness that I should probably get checked out for, for this for at least uh, 15 years. Because about 15 years ago, I met a therapist who specialized in sex addiction and I did an interview with her. You can find that in, in my archives. And she mentioned that every single one of her clients who are addicted to sex or addicted to love, that they were ADHD. And so that was kind of a prompt, hey, maybe I should get this checked out. And then I started having uh, family members who were talking about maybe they have ADHD, then I had family members who were diagnosed with ADHD, and the quality of their life took a dramatic jump upon getting uh, medicated with the equivalent of Ritalin or, or Adderall. And I mean, their life just dramatically improved upon getting medicated. Yet I didn't do anything about this. Right? I just kind of let it linger in the, in the back of my mind until about a month ago when I got two separate entreaties from people close to me saying, you know, please go get checked out for ADHD. And I did, got diagnosed. And then Thursday, I, I finally took medication for the first time. So I received a lot of warnings about uh, this medication, Adderall, from friends of mine who I, I believe all had abused it. And they warned me you won't be able to sleep and there are severe side effects and it's highly addictive and you quickly become used to a particular level and you just keep craving more and more Adderall. And uh, they felt it significantly you know, depreciated the quality of their life. So I deliberately waited until a non-work day, until Thanksgiving, till Thursday, to try my first dose. And when I took my first dose, I'm going to admit I was disappointed because I was hoping for a burst of energy. I was hoping for a burst of uh, euphoria. I was hoping for a burst of uh, confidence. I was hoping for a burst of productivity. Right? These are all the benefits of uh, Adderall from that, that I'd read up on of people taking it. I didn't experience any of those things. I did experience feeling medicated. All right? I, I, I did not feel normal. It wasn't, it wasn't heinous, right? but I, I just felt like I was drugged. I, I went ahead and took my Adderall as prescribed. So I have no history with abusing prescription medication. Uh, for several years, I took lithium. Uh, for several years, I took clonidine. For several years, I took clonopam. I, I quit all three upon beginning my daily Alexander Technique teacher training. So I was doing daily Alexander Technique work. And so a couple of months into that daily work, I abandoned these three medications. I've also taken a prescription modafinil. And at no time with any of my prescription medications have I abused them, taken them for a non-prescriptive purpose or at a non-prescribed amount. So all my friends who warned me about the dangers of Adderall, these were all people who had abused their prescription for Adderall and taken it at much higher rates than was prescribed. So does my modafinil get jealous of my Adderall? So when I went on Adderall, I quit the modafinil. So some people take it in combination, but not with a prescription, all right? There's no prescribed use to the best of my knowledge for both modafinil and, and Adderall. Now, it's uh, been four days since I've begun my twice daily five milligrams at a time Adderall routine. And here are the differences that I note. So I notice that when I read now, I have no desire to listen to music at the same time. So Usually when I'd sit down and read a book, I would often have music playing in the background. So I think I'm a little bit more predisposed towards focus and I don't need quite as much stimulation. So that, that's one difference. Another difference I noticed is that I've started doing a lot more cleaning. So I vacuumed my room for the first time in 10 weeks. I, like, I, I went around my place uh, just... Uh, you know, vacuuming and you know, dusting and, and cleaning. So a lot more cleaning than is, is normal for me. And uh, I'd say I'm about average for heterosexual male, right? I, I've not usually been described as a slob. Uh, I'm not super neat, 
I'm not super dirty. I'm kind of average for, for a heterosexual male, but now just myself doing more cleaning. And also I started taking care of some routine tasks that I just let lapse. And of course I can't definitively state to you, well, this is a direct result of my Adderall, but I think there might be a connection. So for example, I have, I had fluorescent light bulbs here in this room that would emit a, a low hum. And I, I just finally got sick of that low hum and I Googled it and read that, yeah, with fluorescent light bulbs, having a, a low hum is very common. So I just removed my fluorescent light bulbs with the hum and put in like regular light bulbs without a hum. And uh, that's an improvement in the quality of my life. There's not this low level hum going on in, in the background. I also ordered uh, two pairs of new jeans and became prepared to throw away two pairs of old jeans that have some you know, very minor little holes in, towards the, the bottom of, of my legs. But uh, I'd allowed myself to you know, wear these old jeans with you know, little holes at the bottom of the leg. And so I finally just took care of that. So that's, that's a difference. Now, I've kind of gone through my life verbally impulsive, just blurting out inappropriate things. And this has wreaked havoc on my life, but not just on my life, but on the lives of people close to me. And it's not just me, other, other people in my family also have this habit of just blurting out inappropriate things. And this would leave me with kind of a, a doomy, gloomy fear it kind of in the, in the back of my psyche that whenever I get close to someone, I will inevitably disappoint and hurt them because of this tendency I have to just blurt out things. And I, I've also led my life knowing that I can't trust myself, that I will inevitably blurt out things that are inappropriate that will cost me friendships, status, jobs, you know, all sorts of things that are important to me. And I have this habit that I haven't been able to overcome. And yeah, there's just kind of a low level dread. So let me get my act together here. But Hamas has released 14 more Israeli hostages today, the third day of the Mideast ceasefire, and no word on the American hostages that the White House had believed could be included today. Since Bibi Netanyahu's war cabinet accepted the deal under enormous pressure, Hamas has now released 40 Israeli hostages in exchange for the ceasefire and the release of 150 Palestinian prisoners. And of course, we're very happy for those released and their anguished families. Netanyahu stressed the war will continue. And I'm sure that the day after Hamas, there will be no threat to Israel. I don't trust Hamas to do anything right. I only trust Hamas to respond to pressure. Let's stop right there. The media should not fall into the Hamas propaganda trap that this is some grand humanitarian gesture blessed by God. They kidnapped the Israelis as a bargaining chip. The Hamas terrorists seizing 240 hostages, most of them civilian families, including very elderly people and very young infants. Think about how barbaric that is. Look at that, a two-year-old, an 85-year-old among those released Friday. Here's Ohad Mander, nine years old being released, being reunited with his father. And Hamas, which held up yesterday's hostage release for hours, will use the ceasefire to reset its military and put its fighters in a better position to kill more Israelis. Netanyahu, who also came under pressure from President Biden, says he'll, after the pause, he'll resume the military campaign to topple Hamas, which, don't forget, started this war with its brutal massacre on October 7th. I'm Howard Kurtz, and this is Media Buzz. I had a free press. Thanks, Howie. And uh, good, good point in the chat. It's been the only topic on Fox for the last month and a half. Yeah, Fox has just been resolutely pro-Israel to a greater extent than I, I believe it ever has been before. I don't recall seeing one pro-Palestine commentator as a guest on Fox for the, for the last six weeks. Not one, which is kind of extraordinary. And the chat complains, no coverage about what's going on in Ireland. Yeah, I know that there was a, a stabbing and then a bunch of riots blamed on the far right. Do you notice that you 
you often hear invocations of the far right in the news media, but very rarely do you hear any mention of the far left. I just went into Google News, put in far right, something like 150,000 mentions, put in far left, something like 50,000 mentions. So a three to one ratio is a much lower ratio than, than what I expected. But anyway, uh, getting back to my fourth day on Adderall, like carrying with you a fear of your own impulsivity and the both self-destructiveness of this trait and the the harm that it inevitably does to other people it's not a happy thing walking around with it and i may be reading too much into my two five milligram pills a day of adderall but i feel like this fear has been lightened and i feel like this impulse is diminished compared to what it was prior to going on adderall i think i have more of an ability to wrestle with the mundane and non exciting details of life that are you know, essentially part of being an adult. So I'm kind of excited about what my life might look like under Adderall, but I'm going to receive feedback from people close to me. I, I'd be glad if I can go through my life without causing you know unnecessary pain to other people. I'd be glad if I can start paying more attention to mundane details that uh, I used to just uh, skip skip out on. Uh, I've caused myself tremendous damage by failing to keep track of important paperwork, failing to appropriately fill out uh, uh, paperwork. Uh, yeah, I've just caused myself thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of damage and just untold amounts of aggravation because I did not pay attention to non-exciting details. I, I think I think I might be a little better at this. So in 12-step programs, we often say there's no non-spiritual solution to a spiritual problem, but at the same time, there may be all sorts of uh, non-spiritual problems such as ADHD to which there is no spiritual solution. So I do believe we live in a postmodern world where no single narrative is sufficient to make life coherent, not the spiritual narrative, not the scientific narrative, right? Spirituality is not enough. Science is not enough. Religion is not enough. Medicine and psychology are not enough. You need multiple narratives and more complex uh, hero systems. So if you have an emotional addiction, you might want to get checked out for ADHD. Or if people told you you might have ADHD, it's probably worth getting that that checked out also worth getting an overnight sleep test right it's really hard to improve your life when you are compulsively acting out in some way where you can't trust yourself to act in your own best interests and when you're not getting adequate sleep so i went on modafinil in june of 2013 i had a prescription and it it mildly helped me with my adhd symptoms i feel like i'm getting more help for my adhd symptoms now by substituting adderall for Modafinil. Now, I'd love to get a more dramatic boost to my life by trying a higher dose of Adderall, but I'm grateful to miss out on the negative side effects with the just low 10 milligrams total a day dose. So I might just hang out here a while. Excitement can wait. So I noticed uh, Bernard said on Twitter, how can you really appreciate the good days, your good health, your good company, without the bad days, bad health, bad company? You take things for granted if you don't get the bad experiences. Well, no matter how much you improve your life, you will always have bad experiences and you'll always take things for granted. There's no magic pass for leaving the human condition. Now, I have no history with abusing prescription medication. Uh, many people do have a history and I noticed that those who are the most hostile to me trying Adderall are people with a history of abusing prescription medication. So some people you know, abuse alcohol, some people abuse drugs, some people abuse, you know, dissident right material, uh, some people abuse gambling. So I had to quit gambling in my senior year of high school because I ended up as my high school's bookie owing one acquaintance of mine about $1,400. And I realized, hey, this, this is way out of control. Uh, on the other hand, about 20 years ago, I was able to gamble without you know, much problem when someone else gave me the money to do it. All right. Someone wanted to go play the slot machines, wanted me to come with her, said, now I can't do it. I'm a gambling addict. She says, I'll give you $20. So I went, I gambled $20 on the slot machines with her money. And then I was able to walk away and quit. So there are probably some foods that I never eat because I find it easier to abstain from them to be moderate. So we, we have to know ourselves, know, know what things that we can 
you know, indulge in without, without going nuts and, and which things we, we can't participate in at all. So let's get a little bit more here at Media in Buzz. Murdering more than 1,300 people. Um, and what's going on today in this, in this hostage uh, release? It, it's just, it's just it, it beyond fathomable. We'll go to Israel shortly for a live report, but joining us now to analyze the coverage in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Robbie Suave. 